Now let's take a look at creating a loading symbol for while our data is loading into the app. So taking a look at what we currently have, if we click the refresh button, there is currently a very small portion of time where we could be displaying a loader. And I think let's just simulate 3G. Uh, so we're just imitating somebody else's mobile device. Uh, maybe they have a very slow internet connection. You'll notice that when our app first loads in, the initial paint happens and then we've got this period where it's blank for a good like one second or two seconds where we could actually be displaying a loader. So from here until here, there could be a loading symbol just to let the user know, hey, we're actually sending an API request and something's going on in the background, but the data that should be displaying on the page will be displaying soon. So let's change that back to being online. And now let's take a look at how to track whether the API request is currently loading or not. What we could do is we could just turn this current state variable into an object. So now let's create a variable for loading and we'll set that equal to be false by default. And then we'll also create data and we'll set that to be null by default. And so now, when we, before we fetch our product, we'll set loading to be true and then we'll store all of the data for our product in data. So in order to do that, we're just going to have to modify this method a little bit. So before I send my request, what I actually want to do here is I want to change state so that we have a value of loading to be true and then we want to have a value of data or whatever's in our data value to be null, right? And then when we send through the request and we know that that request is successful, we're going to do the same thing here. So we're going to set loading back to false because now uh, the app has done loading, the request is finished, and we're going to store response.data in the data variable. Now, of course, if I save this, we should break our app. And that's because uh, we cannot read property undefined of uh, zero or property zero of undefined. So that's because this now needs to be changed to be product.data. And we're gonna have to change all of the other references to the product information. So let's just paste all of them in. And of course, on, in our if statement, let's check for product.data, right? So let's save that now. And we have a working app again, but we still don't have that loading symbol showing up. So what do we wanna do now? I think what we should do is create an if statement here. So let's create an if statement and we'll check for if product.loading is equal to true. And if product.loading is uh, equal to true, then we'll change content, the content for our app, to be a paragraph and this can just say loading for now. So now if we save this, uh, you can actually see that that's appearing. There's a brief second where we have loading and then our product loads in. So it's probably a lot better if we change this to use a loading component. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up an, uh, my editor here and we're gonna open up a new file. We'll call that loader js and that needs to have a capital L and now we can paste in some HTML for a loader. So all I've done here is I've created a div with a class of loader and now we actually need to add this to our CSS. So one way we can do this is to just go over to index CSS and add in any of our own custom CSS under the Tailwind utilities. And I'm gonna paste in this loading class, which also has some keyframes to make it spin. And this is just a free loader that I got off the internet. Uh, you can actually uh, Google loading CSS loader and you'll find plenty of different CSS uh, loading examples. So now if I save this, uh, I'm gonna have to go back over to my terminal and let's just kill my server and start my server again, which will run the build CSS. And instead of placing this loading paragraph here, 
I can now make use of my loading component that we created. So let's open that up. Or oh, what did I call it? Loader, right? And uh, that needs to be imported over here. So great, so now we have a little CSS loader that is loading into the page. Now something we haven't quite thought about yet is what happens if there is an error. So let's try and access a product that doesn't exist, like for example, product 90. Well, now that product doesn't exist and I can see in my network request that we've actually got an error here, so this is not found, but we haven't treated that error in our app. So now we just have this loading symbol that continues to load forever. So let's take a look at how to track this error. So what I'm gonna do is in my state variables, let's add in an error to monitor when there is an error. But by default, we're gonna set that to false. And then we're also going to copy that and we'll paste that here in set product. So before we send through our request, we also want our error to be false. And when our request goes through and is successful, we can have that error also be false because we know that this means that the response was uh, successful, so we don't actually have any errors. But uh, because Axios is a promise-based library, we can make use of a catch statement here because we can catch a failed promise. And we are going to then have an error from our API and we can run a function on that error and then also do the same thing here, set product. But in this case, we won't have any data because we're not getting a good response from the API. So uh, our data will be null. And now we can set our error to be true. Now, normally what I do here is I would try and use the data that came back from our API and save that and report that to the user. Unfortunately, if we uh, take a look at this, like let's access product 90 here, this API is just returning not found. It's not giving us any usable data. It's not even uh, supplying this as a JSON object. So unfortunately, the error reporting on this API is not that great. But uh, we can just use uh, error set to true. And so in fact, we can probably just use an arrow function instead of the word error over there or the uh, response of error over there. Okay, so now we should know when our um, variable or whenever our product has an error. So if we go back over to our app, let's come back here and refresh again and you'll see that that loading symbol doesn't continue loading forever. Uh, and we do have an error here. And if we were to check our state, in fact, let's actually do that now. Let's go to our components and find the product component. In our state, we should have an error value of true over there. So what we can do now is add in another if statement. So we've already checked for if loading and we've already checked if the product actually has data, but we can also create another if statement here to check if there is an error. And then we can just return a little bit of HTML if there was an error. So in this case, I'm going to just return a, a paragraph that says there was an error. Please refresh or try again later, something like that, right? So now if the response uh, fails, we at least have an error that can be uh, reported back to the user. Of course, the better your API can handle errors in the back end, you could report a 404 or say that the product doesn't exist. In this case, we don't really have much data to work with uh, from the API. It's not giving us anything except for not found. So that, not so great, but uh, at least we can handle it this way. That's all I have for you guys in this tutorial. But before I end off, I just wanna mention that if you like the content that I create, then it would mean a lot to me if you hit that join button below this video. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. Please feel free to leave a like, leave a share, comment, tell your friends it's the best React course you've ever seen, and I'll see you guys next time.